I'm Jason with Datacom. I, uh, what to, to tell you about my company. I read a book a couple years ago called The 4-Hour Workweek. And um, I was in door-to-door -door sales and had to get out because I've got kids and taking them all over the country to, to do that is too hard. So um, my company is a, uh, it's, it's an outsourcing company. So all of my employees, um, assets, everything are overseas. Um, I've got two offices in Karachi, Pakistan. And uh, what we do is we sell, uh, on one of our campaigns, we sell internet and cable products here in the US. So um, the annoying guys that call you and ask you to, to buy stuff over the phone with an accent, that's my guys. Um, <clears throat> so I don't have an office space or anything here. Um, in my goal with this whole company was to uh, do what I do best and, and outsource the rest. And I've been able to get pretty much everything working pretty well uh, without me having to be there. And that has been my goal. So one of the other campaigns, one of the reasons why I came to present at One Million Cups is because we want to help show businesses how to do what we do. Um, sometimes when, you, well, when you're starting up, you oftentimes don't have a lot of money for different things and you have to bootstrap and learn how to do different, uh, different skill sets. And what we do is we put together teams to help you do that um, at a, a much lower price than you'd be able to hire here in the US. So, um, so yeah, that's pretty much what my company does. We've done a lot of different campaigns. We've done outside of um, home services. We've done lead generation. We've done uh, medical products. We've done uh, a, a bunch of different things, just depending on what is, is needed. So uh, that's pretty much how my company works. I've got my business partner who is pretty integral in, in making this happen. We, I started this by just searching LinkedIn for people who knew how to do what I uh, was needing. And he was one of the first people that I met and he immigrated to the US in 2018. And that's when uh, we started this company. So, uh, so yeah, that's day to come. <laughs> what questions do you guys have? Well, I'm, you know, you talk about helping other companies. Uh, I'm, I appreciate you coming in this short notice. That's a cool, great thing to do. Um, do you have a training syllabus or how to how connect with you to find out for helping people in, what, in this field you're looking at? Or? Um, we have a website. And uh, I, I was trying to find the URL for it because we just launched this campaign. But essentially, what we want to do is is help start people with a logo design, the first things that they'll need, social media, website design, all the way up to you know a full stack development or software design. Who's your contact at the SBDC to get all that free stuff? Do you know? The, say that again. Sorry. Who's your contact at the SBDC to get all the free help in, in all those areas? Um, I, I don't have a contact. Just let me know afterwards. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. I mean, you're just talking about expenses, uh, and I'm talking about cutting your expenses in half on that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's good. Who is your ideal customer? Who is your ideal customer? So you're talking to us about helping and, and, and our clients, et cetera. Who's the, your ideal customer that we could, that would best to refer to you? Um, companies that are trying to reduce expenses um, because of, everything that's happened with COVID, you've got everybody is shifting to what our model already was. You know, we have people who work from home um, that, uh, and that you can hire at a, a much cheaper rate. And it could be, uh, you could hire, hire sales reps, you can hire, I mean, whatever the skill set is, we, if we have, you know, a couple week to a month lead time, 
we can hire that person at you know less than half of what you'd hire them here for. So great. It, as far as like to kind of go further with the RA deal customer, one of our biggest specialties is call center. So if you need uh, customer service or sales support or technical support, those types of things, um, we have agents that that can can fulfill that. I'm curious, what is your number one way of getting new clients, like marketing-wise? Is there like one main thing, or is there a lot of different things that you guys do? Um, on this campaign, it's new. Uh, so we actually don't have lead generation for it just yet. So that's, that's why I'm here. I'll ask another one to keep you busy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I, I know you probably weren't prepared with slides or anything, but is this is this an example of what you do, this bundle, or is this one of your clients, or is this you guys? This is us. This uh, is it is so also something that we do. So uh, we do work with companies that are in the, uh, the home services space, and that's cable, internet, home security, those types of things. And um, this is an example of... of what we would do, but this is actually our one of our marketing websites that we use. Because I want this deal for twenty nine bucks, so I, mean, I could wrap. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't market in Utah. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I actually used to do this. I used to. I worked at ClearLink for a while. Um, how, how do you combat or what do you do about people who? I mean. Essentially, people are trying to not bundle. They're trying to decrease and diminish home services. And there's a lot more. Nobody wants home phone anymore. Fewer people want TV service. Everyone's going to streaming service. Do you have any any sort of uh, what's your approach to a shrinking market, a shrinking total addressable market for these types of home services? That's a great question. So with the with our streamers, I mean, they still need internet, and that's a product that we sell. And yeah, the. The more that you bundle, the more that you save. And with this particular deal, it's actually cheaper to get the home phone than to not. So the way that the, the promotion works. So, but yeah, it just depends on, th this is just one example of, of one of our carriers. So in Utah, you have Comcast, it's the big cable company. Um, but in, you know, Nevada, Clark County, you have Cox, and in California, you have Spectrum, Charter, and and so it, it all depends on, on what's available to that customer, what the deal is, and then that's how we go about pitching it. But our bundle rate is at about 95%, so, and that's with of all three services. Another question where you just talking about your need to expand the market, what, uh, where are you releasing your podcast on? Is it, is it on, you have a podcast? I don't. Okay, so, th so, that just is a suggestion, you know, because you have a good, a good story. Okay, you present your story well, who you are. It's unique, family, odd things you're doing, you're traveling, doing all, that's a great story. Just so you know, that to help draw people into you, you need to tell that story more. Awesome, yeah. I've never thought of doing a podcast. So just, this guy over here, catch him afterwards. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I've taught a couple of different people to do what I do. Uh, just because people see that, you know, I spend as much time with my kids and my wife as, as I want. We've been to Europe a couple times, go to Hawaii a couple times a year. Not to brag, but like, we do all of that um, because, you know, the sacrifices that we've made. And I always wanted to be able to make money without having to go to work. And that, to me, is what entrepreneurship is really about, is... You don't, being the entrepreneur doesn't mean that you're the CEO. Uh, you know, I, in my case, I am, but um, I, I have, maybe you guys notice this, but I have really bad ADHD. And so in college, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I went to college for seven years and got my associate's degree. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I wish somebody would have kind of stopped encouraging me to go that route and just said, hey, you need to go into sales, something other than college because you're just not good at it. 
but I, I did come to that conclusion and, um, you know, I stopped pretending that I could be good at everything. And, uh, you know, that's how you get into the solopreneur uh, path is thinking that you're going to learn how to do every single thing in your business. And then you're working, you know, 50, 60, 70 hours a week trying to, to make your business go forward. But that's, you're not, you're not getting out of a 95 job to, you know, you're still, it, it's not a better situation. And so I just was honest with myself and just said, look, I, I know I'm not good at this. I know I'm not good at that. I'm good at sales and I'm good at breaking down complex problems. That's, those are my skill sets. And so I, I did a, a process document on sales process for you know, th this particular product so that I could train a 10 year old how to do sales and selling this in, in particular. And then I just started bringing in people to do different things that I just, you know, like I tried to learn WordPress. I tried to, to go down the click funnels route. I tried to do, you know, Facebook ads. Like I've tried to do it unsuccessfully. I mean, successful enough, but really inefficiently and really time consuming. And, um, but I had that honest conversation with myself and just said, look, these are the things that I, I, I'm not good at and I'm, I can't be good at everything. And so, you know, do what you do best and outsource the rest is kind of the motto that I've had. And, um, and that's essentially how I, I built this company around, you know, the things that I can do well. So now I just pretty much do strategy um, in our new campaigns. You mentioned that one of the services that you give to businesses is um, a call center type services, right? Um, you joked a little bit how, you know, those people that call you with an accent, you know, from India, those are your guys. But how do you, first off, I'd like to congratulate you that you did, you know, summer sales and door-to-door -door sales. That's, that's tough. I've been there. Um, <laughs> terrible. Didn't love it. But, <laughs> um, but how do you get around the first barrier, especially over the phone, you know, how do you break down those barriers that, you know, I feel like it's easier to break down in person, but how do you do that over the phone? Um, it's funny that you say that. Is that that was a stigma that I thought of? I'm like, okay, how do I? Everybody's going to hear that this isn't somebody from the U.S. But the funny thing about that is, is that people are pretty used to talking to somebody with an accent that's not from the U.S. when they call. Um, now we don't do a whole lot of outbound calling just because of the you know FCC problems that you run into with it. But people, and like they kind of expect it. They expect to talk to somebody with an accent. Um, and in a funny way, they're a lot more forgiving than a door-to-door -door salesman. See, so in door-to-door, -door, I did door-to-door -door for 10 years and, and different products. And, um, you know, they're not expecting you to come to the house. So that's like the first hurdle you have to get over is you have to give a good enough short pitch and get inside of the house and get them interested when they had no plan to do anything with it that day. With us, people kind of, um, if they click on one of our ads, then they're, they're, they're already kind of warm, if that makes sense. And then when they talk to somebody who doesn't speak great English, they're a little more forgiving to the sales process. You know, they kind of walk them, they take themselves through it, if that makes sense. Like a new a new door to door salesman, they they usually have beginner's luck, because people know that he's just kind of stumbling through, trying to trying to get it done, and so they kind of help him along the way if that makes sense. So, so are most of the calls you get inbound calls and out outbound? Like it just out depends on the campaign. Uh, currently, yeah, mo mostly inbound um, and in fact we've really transitioned into uh, chat for our sales and um, and people still notice the accent there because they you know the grammar is going to be different than somebody who is here in the US so but yeah I uh, I was pretty surprised and they don't complain as much as, as salesmen here. I, I've had sales teams here and 
you know, trying to manage people's personal lives a little bit because that's kind of part of the deal. Um, when you take a family to some place they've never been to hopefully succeed in a straight, you know, commission job. Um, with our, our guys over there, um, you know, one sale really, you know, it changes their life with how much they, they make from doing sales for us as opposed to trying to sell trinkets or, you know, some other thing in their local city. All right. One more question. Uh, because you have the unique capabilities to change people's lives financially, do you guys have any philanthropic stuff you do in Pakistan and other places where you're doing so have a greater impact? Um, so yeah, we have a, um, it's a kind of like a food program. And so we, uh, we have this one guy that works in our office and his job is to make sure that there's tea, to, uh, that agents can just request tea and he'll bring it to their desk. And then his other job is to make these little food packet bundles that people can come by the office and just get. Um, so yeah, for us, it's a, it's, it's a minimal expense, but you know, for people over there, they're living hand to mouth. Um, that can, that can, you know, it's a, it's a difference of whether I eat that day or not. So we do have that, that we do. Um, it's just local to, you know, people know our company. Um, and so they can, they can always come by and get a, a it's like, just like a bag of food. And, um, but yeah, that's that's what we do. Cool. Good. Sorry, I came in a little late. I might be asking a question you already answered earlier. Would you say that your age demographic is in the older one, as far as that one maybe going from 55 and plus? Because TV and, I mean, phone, uh, typically within your younger generations is going to be a big skip, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, you know, that's, it's a great question, and I would assume that, but our Facebook ad demographic is from 18 up, and, uh, and that's how we get our best results. I, I don't, I, I haven't looked at the data on exactly what we're doing we, as, as far as, you know, what's converting uh, by age, but I, I do know that we, it's, it's not specific to men or women. Um, and that we do go 18 to 65 plus. Okay, looks like there's no more questions. So we have one last question for you. And what that is, uh, what can the One Million Cups community do for you? So what what I need help with is niching down what to offer and who to offer our business services to. So um, for me to hire a full-time employee uh, a month, it runs me probably 800 to $1,000 um, salary. That's 40 hours a week. And um, that person can, you know, they, they usually have a specific skill set, whether it's sales, web development, marketing, um, any of those things. Our software guys are a little more expensive, but um, that's what we're able to do for companies here in the U.S. You know, you can't find somebody with that kind of skill set for, I mean, for that price. You can't find them to do anything for that price, at least not full time. And for the people over there to give you an idea of, of how the, the pay difference is and, and living standard, um, two to three hundred dollars a month in Pakistan is like sixty thousand a year in the U.S. And so, um, so yeah, it's good to have them have that opportunity, and then also present uh, businesses here with that opportunity to to you know leverage that. And um, it's super; it makes everything much more scalable. And so, if I can niche down, that's that's. 
me, I come from uh, business to consumer. Everything I've ever done has been business to consumer. And so now going into business to business, that's what I need help with is learning what companies are going to need need these things, um, need these different services, and which ones would be most effective for for us to, to hire into. Um, and then we also want to work with companies that really have good processes already built in because the reason why people don't succeed in outsourcing is because they don't know how to, they don't know what their process is to be able to hand it to someone and say, okay, study this, come back, and then you can start. And um, that's, that's why I was able to succeed is because I went through and made a process and was able to hand it off and for people to get it who didn't speak the same language as me um, and uh, hadn't sold this product before. So if uh, we can find businesses that have good processes, um, then you know our sales guys will be great for that type of a campaign. Um, people that need cheaper development, whether or a marketing, we you know we have guys that are are really good at that as well. And you don't necessarily need to have a good process with that. You just need to know what what it is that you're trying to get, your budgets and all that kind of stuff. All right, let's give it up for Jason. And actually, Jason, will you stay up there for me? Yep. Um, we always like to give our presenters um, a mug. Just remember um, your time. Thanks. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Well, let's give it up one more time for Jason.